Hi guys, welcome to my studio. John was kind enough to make a screen for me and I've strung some lights, done a little bit of decorating, but this is it. This is where you're invited to come and join me for live streams where we're going to have lots of fun talking about photography. Now, today I would like to share with you uh, a stock photo that I took some time ago and, uh, you know, just give you an idea of how I shot it, how I would edit it, and why I like it as a stock photo. It has a bit of a Valentine's Day theme, which is appropriate since Valentine's Day is coming up. So let's take a look. I'm going to open it here in Photoshop. All right, so this is the image. It is a heart and it is on a fabric background. So what I did was I went to the store and I purchased felt hearts and other shapes. It matched the fabric and it could be used for Valentine's Day, it could be used for weddings, it could be used for any number of things that have a theme of love, friendship, uh, the color pink, you know, any, any of those things. The way I decided to compose this picture is to put the heart at the bottom and the fabric kind of goes back into the distance. And what this does is it allows the top part of the photo to be used for text or any other design elements that a an advertiser or company would like to include in their image. So this was the image as I took it on my dining room table with one light set off to the side. And let's look now at how I'm going to edit it. So the light is coming in from the side, which uh, just gives a little bit of a rim light to the heart that is in the foreground. And it adds a bit of depth to the fabric and the pattern that goes off into the background. The first thing when I'm looking at this image is that it bothers me that the heart is not exactly in the middle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. Now I love these lines that pop up because it helps me to determine exactly where I can uh, is the best place to crop the photo. So now I have the heart in the center. The other thing that I want to do is adjust the lighting a little bit because the light was coming from the side and behind the front part of the fabric heart, the felt heart is a little bit dark. So as you can see here, there's a bit of shadow here. I would like to lighten that just a little bit, but not too much. I think it still looks okay the way that it is, but uh, my own feeling is that I would like to do that. However, I don't think that I would like to also lighten the fabric and the background because if I do that, it may, it may actually bring out too much detail in the weave of the fabric and uh, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I add a layer here above my background layer, now the first thing actually that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background layer so that I always have the original layer so that I don't make any edits or changes that are destructive, meaning that I can't go back to the original. So I've duplicated my layer by clicking on Command J. So I'm on a Mac, but if you're on Windows, I believe it's Control J. So I have my duplicate layer here. Now I'm going to add a layer on top of it, a brightness contrast layer. And I just want to show you what this is going to do to my entire image. I have a couple of options here about how to change the lighting in the way that I want, but um, I'm going to show you both ways. So the first is to put a brightness contrast layer and just bring the brightness up. 
So you can see when I do that, the front of the heart is more lit, which is what I want. But now I have added that problem that I said I didn't want, which is to bring out more of the detail in the background. I like the deeper, softer look of the pink the way that it was. If I zoom in here, you can see that the heart is lighter, but the weave here is very, very bright and it's not exactly the smooth look that I'm looking for. So if I zoom back out a little bit and I have two ways that I could go about this. I can either uh, mask the heart and so allow this, uh, apply this brightness layer only to the front of the heart and not the surrounding bit or I can try and do some edits with Adobe Camera Raw. So let's try the first thing, which is masking. Masking is fantastic. It is a fantastic way to edit your photos because it allows you to apply adjustments and edits to certain parts of a photo and not others. If there's one skill I can encourage you to master, it's masking because it gives you so much creative control over your images. So I'm going to mask this one using the quick. Let's get over there. See this one, two, three, four tools down on the left. And we have this quick selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to use that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over the areas that I want to mask. Now, because there is a difference between the darkness of the heart and the lightness of the background, it's done a pretty good job of masking that there for me. I might, I have to click it on to add. I might just extend it a little bit up to the top of the heart here. All right, I have a feeling in this case, I might want to feather the selection a little bit. And that just means that um, the edge of the selection will be feathered out so that it doesn't look like such a hard line when I've applied uh, a change to that area. So I can go to select, modify and feather and I can select how big I want the feather to be. I don't want it to be very big. I might just say 10 pixels and there we go. So on the right hand side here where my layers are, you can see that I have my background, my layer one and my brightness contrast layer. But I don't want this white square means that the brightness contrast is applied to the entire image. Wherever you have black, then it will not be applied in that area. Wherever you have white, it's applied. So I can either take this paintbrush tool. Now the problem is if I apply black, it's actually going to uh, get rid of the, so if I have it on black, it'll get rid of this area here on the heart and now it's back to dark, which I don't want. So I'm going to, use the selection, but I'm going to invert the selection so that wherever I paint now will actually end up being affected to the other part of the image that I didn't actually select. So let me show you. So right now my heart is selected and the background is not selected. If I go to select inverse, now it is the opposite. Everything around it is selected, but not the heart. And you can tell this by the marching ants line that is all around the outside of the canvas, the image itself. So I can either take my paintbrush and paint over the background, and I can have my brush at whatever size I want, but that works. And you can see now on the layers panel that the black here indicates that the brightness contrast is only being applied to the heart itself and not to the surrounding areas. And 
if I deselect, you can see that this is what my image looks like. Now, if I turn off the brightness contrast layer, you can see the difference. It's darker and lighter. Now, because I have it, mask it masked, I can also click back on this brightness contrast layer and play around with the brightness and contrast. So I can make it a lot lighter. I can bring the contrast down, which effectively also brings down the saturation in this case, which is nice and brings back out some of the detail that gets lost because of the high brightness. Um, or I can make it really different. Yeah, so you just play around with that. And I think for myself, that looks pretty, just like that. Now, that is one way to bring up the foreground heart and leave the background layer the way it is. I'm going to show you another way. I'm going to turn off this brightness contrast layer and instead of using brightness contrast, I'm going to use the Adobe Camera Raw feature, which is built into Photoshop. And what it does is it brings you to a set of sliders that are almost exactly like the ones that you use in Lightroom. If Lightroom is something that you have used before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's try this. I've duplicated my background layer and I am going to apply this camera raw filter to my layer one. Now you can go up to filter, camera raw filter, or you can click on command shift A. Adobe Camera Raw. You can see that right up here at the top. So again, these are sliders in this main screen here that are going to be applied to the entire image. If I increase the exposure, if I decrease the contrast, if I get the saturation down a little bit, it's being applied to the entire thing. I can change that very easily by clicking on this paintbrush up at the top, which allows me, I'm going to make my paintbrush smaller and it has a feather. You can see that extra ring around it as a feather. I can paint over the areas that I want local adjustments to be affected uh, to. So now when I increase exposure you can see it's just where I've painted over contrast up down shadows up down it's a little more difficult to mask it in this way and you see when I make the adjustment to the uh, exposure there that uh, it is a little bit spilling over into the background now but you can do it this way i can change the feather on my paintbrush and i can apply edits just like that when i click ok it will be applied to that layer in photoshop where we were just working however i can also go back here and in Adobe Camera Raw, go back to my main panel, which is up at the top left, and I can apply changes that I would like to see to the entire image. Let's see. Bring my highlights up, maybe bring the shadows down a little. Texture, I like texture because it's very, uh, textured felt and uh, the saturation is a little bit much. Okay, so if I apply these changes to the entire image and I click OK, it will be applied to the entire image. Then I can actually go ahead and mask this entire layer just like I did with the brightness contrast layer. I'll rename that so you can see what I'm doing here. This camera raw layer is applied to the entire image, the adjustments that I made in camera raw. If I turn it off by clicking this eyeball, you can see the difference that that layer made. What I want is a mask, just like you see up here on the brightness contrast layer, which is not visible right now. 
there's a really easy way to do this. I, if I don't actually add that mask right there by clicking that one button, I can first go to this brightness contrast mask because it's already there. Add the mask to selection. You can see it with the marching ants around the heart. Click on the camera raw and then click this add layer mask. It will automatically apply it just like uh, as if I had just done it with the paintbrush and all that. So now I have two different ways that I have lightened the foreground, meaning brought up the shadows that were created with the lighting behind the felt heart. And I can show you the difference between using the brightness contrast layer and the camera raw filter just by turning them on and off. Let's take a look. So here we have, this is the camera raw filter. I'm gonna turn that off. This was the original. This was with the camera raw filter. And this was with the brightness contrast layer. So there we go. I have a Valentine's Day theme stock photography image ready to upload to stock agencies. This is one of the pictures that I have sold in my portfolio. It works because it is a simple, strong theme. It has space for text and uh, there is just, there's a lot of ways that it can be manipulated and incorporated into uh, an article or an advertisement or anything like that. So this is how I planned and edited this stock photo. I might also just take it and make it into a Valentine's Day greeting card or uh, frame it and put it on my wall for Valentine's Day. It's, uh, it's just so much fun. Thanks for coming along, guys. I can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye.